Hey guys, I'm Andre. I'm Elton. I'm Tristan. And this is ATV. Right now, we're going to be reacting to the the death battle of Spider-Man 2099 versus Batman Beyond. My screw attack. <laughs> yes, and it, this seems like it's going to be pretty intense, especially considering in the the last time a Spider-Man Batman like bat, death battle happened, yeah. Spider-Man Spider won. won. Wow. And Honest. Which both of them are technically are my favorite heroes, so yeah, it's hard to choose between both of them. I like Spider-Man. I like Batman. Probably both of my favorite heroes. DC and Marvel. Also, He's if you no consider fighting. the Flash, they're like my three. Those three are my favorite. Yeah. So, for me, I'm probably going to be rooting for Terry, Batman Beyond, yeah, just just because because I know more about him. I've watched the animated series about him. And a movie that with Joker Returns, I've watched that, which is one of the best movies I've ever seen. And pretty much, so that's pretty much just it, in my opinion. I just know more about him. Tristan, who do you want to win? Because I don't care. <laughs> I, wanna, I just want to see the fight. <laughs> yeah, so I guess we'll maybe discuss, try discussing more before the fight happens, but yeah, like after we get all the until information. Until we know, because we know some stuff about Spider Man 2099, but not too much. Yeah. To go off if you would win, so I guess we'll talk more. Okay, if Andre's rooting for Batman, I'll go for Spider Man. How about you, Elton? <laughs> I'll go for Batman. Whoever wins gets five bucks. <laughs> gets five oh, wait, 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 wait. Check the wallet. The future. Everyone wants to see it, and why not? It has robots, flying cars, and of course, superheroes. Hey, yeah, just speaking the of the Flash. Yeah, those, we're just but they're even cooler because of all the Marty McFly. Like Terry McGinnis, the <laughs> he should Batman be in a death battle. <laughs> and Miguel O'Hara, the Spider Man from 2099. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Okay. Okay. Terry McGinnis was your average futuristic high school student. He went to future raves, complained about future problems, had a future girlfriend, yeah, you know, the usual. Until one fateful day when Terry got into a fight with a group of Jokers. What's he got against comedians? No, no, a gang <laughs> called the Jokers. You know, like, the Joker. Ah, but with a Z, because it's the future. Well, naturally. Jokers. After possibly the most dangerous Obviously. motorcycle chase ever put on television. Yeah, it's cool, he's got a helmet. <laughs> Terry found himself inside an isolated mansion owned by an elderly billionaire named Bruce Wayne. Here, he stumbled oh. upon the most important revelation in his life. He's an elder. Bruce Wayne is Batman! Oh, what a surprise! Well, more like he was Batman. He retired from crime fighting years ago, because, you know... Age is a bitch. Wait a minute. After decades of secrecy, a punk teenager just happens to stumble into the Bat Cave? For crying out loud, if he'd found my secret lair, he'd have been vaporized on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Terry's roller coaster of a day still wasn't over. Turns out his dad got murdered. Dad? Dad! Bummer. So he did what any emotionally charged teen who wants to avenge their dad would do. He stole the bat suit, but not the old cape and cowl of yesteryear. This was the latest and most advanced bat suit. Terry That's McInnes sick. didn't just become the all new Batman. Cool he suit. was Batman Beyond. You ever wonder what would happen if Batman got a hold of an Iron Man suit? It's basically that, and damn, he looks freaking red. The bat suit's nanotechnology yeah, greatly enhances yeah, his cool. strength and provides yeah. several thin yet strong really layers of either. ballistic and environmental protection. And he can fly! He can soar faster than a speeding future car, and he's really no, nimble that's in the a air. Real Plus, bat. he can always give his <laughs> punches and kicks a literal rocket boost. The suit sports over two dozen other gadgets for combat and espionage. He has a wrist-mounted grappling hook that can extend over 50 feet. There's a cloaking device, a lock decoder, finger microphones, climbing claws, an underwater Jeez. breather, thermal and binocular finger vision, micro extendable really? spikes on his arms, flashbang grenades, flashbang. triple weighted bolas, a buzzsaw, and even retractable tweezers. Splinters are no laughing matter. And don't forget all those sweet, sweet oh, batarangs. These new age ninja stars are even sharper and more compact than before. And they come in a variety of delightful flavors. 
Like explosive, ensnaring, and electrifying. Terry's got a solid But does he have shark can disarm multiple yeah. opponents with a single <laughs> shot. But if he's feeling a bit lazy, he can always just use his arm launchers to fire battering discs. Also, when well, anyone gets close, with... the whole suit can act like a man-sized taser. The electric <laughs> shock is strong enough to stun people spliced with animal DNA and short out heavy machinery. But the tools don't make the man, er, Batman. Terry's a master martial artist with plenty of training from legends like former Robin Dick Grayson, totally real ninja Kyrie Tanaga, <laughs> and the former Dark Knight himself. Well, once he got over the kid stealing his suit, of course. Bruce Wayne doesn't just serve as Terry's mentor. He's also a constant source of advice and information on the go through his direct link to the bat suit from the bat cave. Good thing, too, since Terry's not exactly the world's greatest detective. At least not compared to the old man. Bruce is extremely intelligent and an expert analyst. Plus, the Batcave has oh, some very impressive oh. technology. Not only does it host one of the most <laughs> the powerful supercomputers on the planet, <laughs> it's also completely dependent on its own hydroelectric power supply and isolated network. Still, I don't care who Bruce used to be. Having an old guy barking orders in your ears sounds annoying. <laughs> like your dad's always looking over your shoulder. Or, at least I imagine, because I didn't have one. Well, Terry is <laughs> Bruce Wayne's secret son. <laughs> what? In an effort to ensure there would always be a Batman, government boogeywoman Amanda Waller had secretly overwritten Warren McGinnis's reproductive DNA with that of Bruce Wayne's. So, like, he was just blessed in Wayne babies? It's like all the fun, but you Everyone could get out of any child Batman. support case. And me. bonus, I guess Terry's father technically wasn't murdered. Good for him. Also, he's got all the benefits from Bruce's kick-ass genes. Even before going through combat training, Terry was a skilled fighter. Strong enough to send opponents flying with a single punch. In the suit, he's Damn. strong enough to lift large I-beams and this giant boulder. He's even survived getting his leg trapped under Bruce Wayne's trophy penny. What's so special about a penny? Just look trophy. at it. Holy colossal <laughs> currency, Batman! <laughs> the diameter what? is easily 20 feet wide uh. and is frequently dated from the 1940s. This means what? the penny is likely composed of bronze and weighs around 166 tons. That's more than enough to crush all the bones in your foot. But not Terry. He was up and at him like nothing happened. I mean, this guy's tough enough to take a missile to the face and then fall hundreds of stories. And all he got out of it was a couple broken ribs. What's a penny as heavy as 33 monster trucks gonna do? He's quick enough to dodge <laughs> gunfire, skilled enough to defeat lizard people and the Who Justice Lords. In a newer suit, he could fire concussive pulse blasts and even outrace an intercontinental missile, which can reach speeds of up to 15,000 miles per hour. How old that's about 19 is times that the speed of sound. He's still no Bruce Wayne, though. He's kind of a punk and doesn't have the amazing smarts or expertise of Batman Classic. You don't quite have his magnificent brain, for instance. You do have his heart, though. Maybe not, but he has accomplished feats equal to his predecessor, tonight. like oh, fighting Superman uh, and ending the Joker threat once and for all. Clearly, Terry McGinnis has more than earned the title of Batman. You're pretty strong for some clown who thinks he's Batman. I am Batman. Cool, pretty cool. Sweet. So, here's an unfortunate spoiler. The year 2099 kinda sucks. <laughs> Plagued by a massive civil war between humans and mutants, the world fell into a dystopian so, ruin of uh, violence sorry for and anarchy. The heroic age had come to an end. I guess. But some people still wanted a sequel. Enter Miguel O'Hara, a child prodigy turned super genius with a penchant for genetic tinkering. Miguel's skills landed him a job at one of the biggest companies in the What's world, the Alchemax, Irish where he got to work trying to rebuild one of the greatest heroes of all time, Spider-Man. Specifically, he attempted to replicate the DNA of Peter Parker, the original Spider-Man. But like most of the 21st century superheroes, not much remained of Parker outside of stories and legend. Miguel had to build his experiment from scratch, starting with a single, simple spider. Unfortunately, Alchemax didn't have the greatest job security. After a lot of bad blood and some spilled blood, Miguel wound up accidentally getting a dose of his own creepy crawly project, transforming him into the Spider-Man of 2099. But future Spider-Man isn't quite the same as your grandpappy Spidey. That's <laughs> right. Apart from the superhuman strength, speed, durability, and improved healing, Miguel's powers are entirely different. Unlike Parker, he can't actually stick to any surface. 
He can still wall crawl though, using retractable talons on his fingers and toes, which also make for fairly deadly weapons in a fight. And he's got fangs like a vampire! If he bites you, he can inject a venom that can paralyze your whole body almost instantly. Yeah. Also, he may not have Petey's trusty spider sense, but his sense of sight, smell, and hearing are super fine. He can hear noises from miles away, see in the dark, and make out far off and fast moving objects with ease. In fact, his senses are so acute, he wears tinted glasses to keep daylight from hurting his eyes. And like any Spider-Man, he can shoot webs from his hands. Miguel doesn't need compact web shooter devices on his wrists. He actually has organic spinnerets in his arms, which create and release thick, durable strings of webbing. Because they're natural, these strings are chemically identical to spider silk, with a tensile strength similar to steel. Ew! Okay, the original Spider-Man always kind of grossed me out, but this guy's powers are disgusting. Yeah. I think Miguel yeah, would man, agree with you. Well, yeah, one day he's just your average dweeb doing sciencey stuff like you, and the next he's got big lumps in his arms which shoot sticky stuff? Who <laughs> would be weirded out? Miguel saw Dad. his newfound power as a curse. A blight which turned him into an inhuman freak of nature. But that didn't stop him from fighting crime, complete with his own Spidey suit. His original costume was made from unstable molecules, allowing the use of his talons without tearing the fabric. He also okay. wears a web-like cape made of light bite which lets him glide through the air. Oh, light bright! I remember that! Man, do they still have that in the future? And did they find a way to stop you losing those little pegs? Light bite. Yeah, whatever. The suit looks pretty cool, so I hate to spoil the mood, but it's actually just a run-of-the-mill costume from a Day of the Dead festival. No, really. Though after meeting the present-day Peter Parker, Miguel received a much-needed upgrade. His new suit contains synthesized unstable molecule oh, fabric mixed with Kevlar, greatly improving his defense. This suit can survive a shot from a howitzer artillery cannon. A common M777 military howitzer fires 92-pound shells at 2,200 feet per second. That hits with over 100 tons of force. Miguel's even taken a hit from the thing, a hit which shattered a tempered glass window and sent Miguel flying over two dozen feet. And the new suit has explosives, hologram projectors, infrared scanning, oh and it's God. even got wings and rocket just boosters on the feet. All Wait, these. that sounds familiar. Miguel may be a genius, but he's at his best when he's working with his holographic assistant, Lila or the Y-rate life form approximation. She's basically like the future Alexa with a bunch of extra features. She keeps track of Miguel's life signs and surroundings. With Lila's scanners and his super senses, anyone would have a hard time trying to sneak up on future Spidey. While Lila was originally built as a home appliance, she can be stored on Miguel's portable communicator. She can act as an onboard lie detector and do advanced calculations to the 20th decimal in a millisecond, which is flippin' amazing. Fun fact, Lila's appearance was based on Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> Not that anybody in 2099 seems to know who Marilyn Monroe was. Okay, seriously, how did they lose so much information in less than 100 years? <laughs> Remember, kids, always back up your files. It'll prevent the apocalypse. Oh, well, I know lucky for them, Miguel got over his emo phase <laughs> yeah. and started setting the future back on track. And he had the skills to do it. He's quick enough to dodge gunfire, tough enough to take a shotgun blast to the chest, resilient enough to tank electric shocks, and strong enough to rip a 20-ton turret off a tank. More than that, he helped another Spider-Man keep this giant building piece in place. What even is that? Likely some sort of antenna, but it also resembles the mooring mast atop the Empire State Building. Back when everybody thought Zeppelins were the hot new thing, because who doesn't like riding a giant flammable balloon full of explosive gas? Sign me up! I do. it's composed of steel and roughly estimating its size compared to the Spider-Man on the roof, then comparing the Empire State Building's mooring mast, this should weigh, at most, 200 tons. Gosh, so basically, dang, McGill's dude. a badass, and he proved it in the most epic way possible. Oh. After rebuilding the world <laughs> with Captain America, Miguel inherited the most legendary weapon of them all, Mjolnir. Although Thor's hammer what? didn't actually grant him its warrior powers, Miguel didn't use it as a weapon, but as proof of his authority. A literal symbol of the societal Is weight he, he alone could carry. With his yeah, dominance like asserted, Miguel created the utopian future a person could only dream of. And you thought Peter Parker was cool. This Spider-Man is at the top. Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man of the year 2099. That's me, ready to save the universe and looking good while doing it. <laughs> All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all.
But first, the future is now in the form of Blue Apron. Just pause this. Oh, you need to pause it. But uh, okay, so that should we pause it after or before? Yeah. This is gonna be a like a pretty hard battle. Yeah, honestly, I know, I honestly, win. I think Spider-Man would win. Yeah, yeah, because he explains so much about. <laughs> There's a few things. One, he seems he just seems stronger and. Uh, Speed uh, might be a, di a, fa a different factor, and also like he's strong. combat ability. But he's—I feel like he's stronger. And he has and, more uh, equipment. Right? And there's no the equipment. I don't feel no? that it's pretty similar. The, yeah. The problem yeah. comes to me is the strength and a bit one I find to me personally find even more than strength intellect. Yeah. Yeah. Is, unlike Terry, is. who yeah, does, he's he not that have, smart. He doesn't like have Batman. he doesn't have Batman's level intellect. He this guy kind of does. This guy has a genius. Intellect too, at least yeah. in science and everything. So it's just like, so and yeah, so it's, it's, strength and intellect is like that's pretty much where I like my idea is too is the fact of just like bat like if they honestly thought Batman couldn't beat Spider Man, mm -hmm. then it's a thing of like this Spider Man, the Batman Beyond is he, great and he has all those great gadgets and everything, but honestly it doesn't. He's not. It doesn't seem like he's better than batman if batman had those exact same things yeah. but this spider-man seems to be on par as if not like better, stronger, stronger peter, like, parker, yeah. peter parker, parker so it's just like i don't know i'm i gotta give it to like spider-man probably see? See? Come here. this one <laughs> but yeah we'll see we'll like, see i don't know yet <laughs> might be batman yeah. who knows Ooh, here comes the fight here it is Dennis, keep an eye out. I've been seeing some odd reports regarding this part of the city. Okay. I was brooding there. What the shock are you? Okay. I only thought Spider-Man. 2099 is a brooding type of spider. Yeah, me too. I don't know where I got that from, but I swear that's how I right thought it was. Yo, 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 yo. Hey, Lila, get me a reading on this vampire guy, yeah? Oh, <laughs> it's more like a vampire than that, man. But I can try hacking his suit. Can he use the biting power in the mask? Yeah. Man. He's too comfortable in the air. Try a different approach. Get to ground level. More comfortable than him. Yeah. The guy that's flying. Yeah. Speaking of the guy who's flying. I guess it's more because he has more mobility with the swinging. Like, yeah, because there's like buildings, right? Yeah. There's structures around. And uh, like, like he can change his speed and everything a lot faster. Our new friend, no doubt. How's the hack going? No, we're fast. Get in close and finish this quick. No problem. Can my fangs pierce his suit? I think so. Then I'll finish this myself. <laughs> I think so. It's not very reliable. Oh. Oh. Here we go, here we go. Oh, punch him. What did he put on him? Oh. 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 Did he kill him? Problem that's it? Solved. I guess that's one way to do it. Really? Really? <laughs> No way. Never get tired of seeing people blow okay, up. Honestly, no, no, I lost. <laughs> council, Terry uses flashbang to take advantage of Miguel's sensitive eyesight and his electric shock that can short out large machinery to deal with Lila. Yeah, unlike Bruce, the poor girl wasn't really built for combat. And while her hacking skills were top notch, the isolated Batcave had the defenses to hold her off. Okay. Even still, Terry's stats edged out Miguel's in more ways than one. Okay. When it came to maneuverability and durability, they were mostly even. Both could dodge bullets and weave through the air. Both could survive heavy ballistic hits. But unlike Terry, Miguel's never outraced anything faster than a Mark 19 ballistic missile. For physical strength, Terry had him beat too. Recall really? that boulder that he lifted underwater. 
This took place in Superman's Fortress of Solitude near the Arctic, so the boulder was likely composed of sedimentary dark limestone, the most common rock type around that location. So we compared Terry's height to the boulder, applied the density for limestone, and subtracted the weight reduced by underwater buoyancy Jeez. to find the boulder's <laughs> weight to be 192 so tons. Right and he tossed it aside like it was nothing. Terry's peak strength in the bad suit has to be more than 200 tons. Assuming Miguel applied his fair share when holding up that antenna, his best strength feat we know of is at max 100 tons. But he's a Spider-Man! Spider-Man can lift more than that, right? Not usually. Technically, Miguel's powers are so different from Peter's that we shouldn't really scale him to other Spider-Men. But for the benefit of the doubt, let's do it anyway. We'll check out two of Spider-Man's most impressive strength feats. The first is the time he braced a private jet while it was landing. Look at him! He's literally the landing gear! According to Spider-Man himself, the plane's total weight was at most 115,000 pounds. Adding the thrust from a Whittle W1 engine, which this small jet is most likely to have an engine comparable to, this feat comes out to 58 tons. Not even close to Terry's 200. Then there was this one time where Spidey had to push way past his limits to lift what he offhandedly compared to as a locomotive. Since he could measure the plane, it's likely he's accurate here, but given the time period, that's still only 130 tons at most. It's clear Terry had a pretty mm. sizable physical mm. advantage. And just Honestly, because Terry's mind wasn't as strong as the original Batmans didn't mean he's dumb. Even more, Miguel never trained like Terry did. Hell, he never really had much formal training at all. But Terry was trained by ninjas, stealth artists, and other crime fighters to be a master in the battlefield. And since Miguel didn't have a spider sense, Terry just had to wait until the untrained future Spidey left an opening. In that short, was while Miguel yeah, wasn't completely my, like, biggest thing was like, Terry was his, strength, his senses, like, were they gonna make, the they make it actually better than Batman a spider sense was or not? Because a spider sense was like... Batman beyond. You won, spider... Andre. You won. Stick oh, around. I kind of changed my... We're gonna show the next, the next combat. It's... And if you want to watch exclusive commentary on this episode, click that little box over there and start a first membership trial. Try to grab one of these shirts, too. And it's... Size of the finale. Oh. Seth Seth Roth. Roth. No! Versus. Versus. Virgil. Virgil. Really? Seth Roth's gonna win yeah. because Dante won last one. Final fantasy. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> plus, Seth Roth's insane. Yeah, Seth Roth's insane. Well, I don't Virgil know. is pretty insane because Don He's like. I don't know. I don't know. It's tricky. Because, like. They just, they, like, the way they put Dante, it's like, but Virgil dies, doesn't he? Yeah. Like, where Dante doesn't. So it's yeah. like, hmm. Interesting, no, well, interesting. We'll do that when we'll it comes out. We'll react to that when that comes out. It's yeah, pretty right sad. Now, now let's talk about Spider-Man versus Batman. December, what? December 18. That's but, not too far. Oh my God. That's way closer. But yeah. literally... I thought that Spider-Man was gonna win. Hey, I'm happy. happy! I'm actually you said, happy. You said Batman. Batman dude. Yeah, yeah at happy the beginning, Batman I wanted I wanted Batman to win, but at the end, I thought I don't know him five I bucks, thought Spider-Man was going to. <laughs> like, it's just I don't know. We'll put a point counter for every death battle now. Because obviously, it was, was a thing. Zero. It was a thing of Spider-Man Spider Sense was the biggest thing about why he beat Batman. So I was just thinking like. Like with everything that they gave him, yeah. he was pretty much a daredevil in a way. Mm. And so it's just like, I was just thinking like, what was it better than Spider Man Spidey Sense? Mm -hmm. But I guess they thought it wasn't. It wasn't I guess. And things like, and then I also don't think power. Any, I don't think. I'm pretty sure that's the reason. No matter what, it would wouldn't be better than. Because they're both, his senses and Spider Man's senses are kind of different. Like Spider Man's. They help in different fields. I feel like his. I feel like uh, Spider-Man's in this helps farther range. Like he can hear farther. Yeah, but yeah. While Spider-Man's is close. It's on. almost. It's yeah, like it's more close. It combat. helps with his combat. Yeah, like it's, few, it's almost like a future sight. Type yeah, thing. it's literally like a future Makes sight. Sense. So like, so his. That's why I think the spider sense is just better fit for combat, while his senses aren't. But his senses. But still, it could have been like, oh, his senses might have like been helped, helped still. But and I honestly thought Spider-Man would have been stronger. But yeah. apparently, he, nah. the feats that they put, he is in. Yeah. Because to me, it was the intellect and the, like I said before, the intellect and the strength were the two things that made me feel he had an edge on. But apparently, 
how they put it was, yeah, he's sm he's smarter than him, but it doesn't mean Terry wasn't he, like strong. Yeah. It like does, no, he was. It's not that he was. It's not that he was like a genius, but it's not. He still was pretty smart. He's pretty apparently. combat smart. Yeah, so, like because he was trained by Dick and so all, guess, and like a ninja. I, I guess. What I do ninja. you think? What do you expect, right? And Bruce himself. I yeah. guess I agree with their final verdict on who won. So it, yeah. it was pretty. Yeah, it was pretty interesting. Cool. It was, Pretty cool. Good to know. I always love learning felt, more about characters. The fight kind of felt a bit short, honestly. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was gonna. I thought it was gonna go for a while. while. Yeah. Probably preparing for this one, the Seth Roth Virgil Seth fight. Seth It's gonna be fight yeah. along. Okay. Yeah. But with all that said, uh, if you like the video, don't forget to leave a like, mm. subscribe to see more videos. Maybe subscribe. you'll and maybe you'll see us just react to uh, Seth Roth vs Virgil. Yeah. And uh, comment down below if anything else that you would want us to see. And. Uh, with that, I guess let's see ya. Bye.